Welcome back. Let's go back to one of our stories we're, of course, tracking today. We've seen that more than 400 high-powered scientists and politicians are like they're meeting at the G20 Science Ministerial Meeting at the SKA site in Carnarvon in the Northern Cape Province. Now, the SKA MID, it's currently under construction and eventually will form part of the SKA, which is being built between South Africa and Australia. And so this multi-billion rand project will culminate in the largest, most sensitive radio telescope in the world when completed. Of course, Leanne Manners joins us for an update. Leanne, a very good morning. Roaming from the little corner of the Karoo, we're seeing one of the most ambitious science collaborations taking place. What's happening on your end as you continue to bring us that coverage there for this G20 ministerial science meeting? Yeah, a very good morning to you, Liesl, and to everybody else. And I know I wished you happy Heritage Day, and I'll do it again because let me tell you, we've moved outside. It is freezing. It's beyond freezing. My hands are freezing. My hair's all over the place, but it, I don't care. We are in the heart of the Karoo, and it really doesn't matter. This is just absolute magnificence. We were standing inside the venue, and that's the shed. They call it the shed, and that's where all of the dignitaries are going to be a bit later. But you know what? We didn't want to be in the shed. We want to be outside in the Karoo because this is the one of the most unique venues in the world. It's quiet. It's one of the darkest places on earth. And this was the perfect spot for this very ambitious Meerkat and uh, SKA project to be undertaken. But I don't want to tell you m more than I have to because I have got all the brains standing next to me that can give us all the information we need. Pon uh, Ponso Maruping, who is the managing director of uh, Saro, is with us here today. And I mean, I am just, I'm in awe of where we're standing because I, I think South Africans perhaps don't take advantage enough of the Karoo where you have such beauty and there is magic inside this place. Uh, I always say that uh, the nice thing about being here is actually realizing what a beautiful night sky we have. Oh. Uh, you literally do not need any lights out here. It is just fantastic. Almost looks like a painting every time I look up uh, during the night here. Yeah. It is incredible. I mean, when you talk about stargazing, we did that last night, and last night was a, a clear, clear evening where we got to see, and I always say it when you stand here, that you, you suddenly realize the globe that we live in, because from the edge to the edge is just stars mm -hmm. and the galaxies and the Milky Ways and you name it. And when you put these telescopes here, we are seeing things and scientists are seeing things they've never seen before. Yeah. Uh, Mirkat has completely surpassed <laughs> what we expected it to do. Um, every year we just have this um, uh, scientists around the world who are asking, putting up proposals to use the telescope because at the moment it is one of the most, uh, I, you know, uh, unique radio uh, uh, telescopes uh, that does things that other telescopes cannot do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I gave out a statistic, and I don't know if it's true or not, one that says it's 50 times stronger than any existing telescope. I feel like it's even stronger than that. Um, I mean, you know, you it's not very easy to compare these uh, because all of them use very different techniques. It certainly has abilities to do a lot of the other things that telescopes can do. Uh, for instance, optical telescopes have a limitation that they can only work at night. We can observe 24-7. Uh, because we are receiving radio waves mm. and because our receivers are really just fantastic, uh, they are able to receive the faintest signals uh, from the universe. Yeah. Mm. So this is an intergovernmental project and a lot of those that are, are investors in this and a part of this are coming to visit. There are also others that are not a part of it that perhaps have shown interest to want to get in. I'll ask obviously the governmental questions more to the minister when we speak to him in the last hour, but I mean, this is a big moment for the site. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, SK project started more than 20 years ago. Um, so it, it has been a very um, ambitious project and we are really excited to be here now. Uh, when we launched Meerkat in 2018, uh, we did not expect it to do as well as it's done. And now all of these other uh, partner countries are, have joined uh, the SKO project and we, it's a now tru, tru, truly a global project going forward. Yeah, it, re it really is and we are, we're going to get the sense of it. Uh, 
have you ever had such a gathering happening here? I mean, we talk about the G20 and that's all we've been speaking about this entire year, a G20 meeting here and a G20 meeting there. But when you have got in excess, I mean, I don't even know how many ministers and deputy ministers and ambassadors and countries that are represented coming here. And for many of them, this is a first. They've never seen anything like this before. This must do a lot for the operations here. Uh, I I mean, the thing about it, though, is that uh, if you think of how uh, people often talk about South Africa, maybe that's not the first thing you think about. You have the most um, advanced uh, telescope or science project be based here. And not only just be based here, but have actually South Africans working, developing it, uh, designing, manufacturing, building the telescope, using it as well. So now to be able to say... We have here a unique uh, opportunity to partner with anyone uh, around the world to do some of the most difficult science you can ever do. Yeah. Uh, and we have already uh, laid the baseline for that to be done. So, you know, um, it just uh, provides such a great opportunity for any of the other countries that are not, not members yet of the SK to become members of this uh, amazing op uh, project. You know, one of the things I also wanted to touch on was a little bit about what it's done for the community because I know it's far and I know that it's quite an, it's quite a restricted entry kind of venue but just from my experience last night which was amazing doing the stargazing one of the guides was from uh, Carnarvon mm -hmm. the other guide was from the Khalakhadi mm -hmm. and the two of them were telling us stories and the history of the stargazing with the telescopes shining the laser up into the sky something I don't ever imagine they ever dreamed they'd be able to do mm -hmm. so are these kind of stories we're seeing that are emanating from this I mean the one thing about astronomy is that it's actually uh, able to um, look at, combine the heritage part. Everybody has always looked up <laughs> to the sky and had their own stories about what they are observing. Um, and then combining it now with actual science. I mean, it, it really lends itself very well to doing something like that. And uh, what we've always intended to do is make sure that we bring as much of the community to be part of this project from training the astro guides, giving them a, an opportunity to share their heritage and combine it with actually the enjoyment of the night sky here. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, we do a lot of other projects, uh, training artisans and technicians that end up uh, working and uh, maintaining the telescope here on site. Well, listen, I wish you the best of luck. I know we're going to be speaking a lot more during the, the course of the morning. We'll talk about how many more of these telescopes are up, how many more are projected to come up, but we'll talk about that more in the next hour of the program. Uh, Ponso Maraping, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us here on the program. Of course, Ponso is the, uh, the MD of the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory as we're coming to you from an incredibly windy, windy Karoo. It's icy, my hands are beginning to freeze, but I, it would have been disappointing if it wasn't cold. For some reason, <laughs> I have a, I think the last time we were here, it was close to minus 10. Yeah. So at least we're not in the minuses. It's, it's freezing, but it's not in the minuses. <laughs> All right, the exactly, the sun is out. <laughs> Let's take a break on the program and we'll see you again in the next hour. All right, Leanne, we're wishing you strength there as you slowly defrost and continue to bring, you, uh, bring us all that running coverage. Even from that little corner of the Karoo, of course, you can see how cross-border collaboration can extend beyond borders. Thanks, Leanne, for that update.